A safe flight always starts with a thorough pre-flight inspection. In this video, EasyFly will show you how to pre-flight a Cessna 172 SP following the steps prescribed on the aircraft's operating handbook. Remember that according to federal regulations, it's the responsibility of the pilot in command to make sure the aircraft is in an airworthy condition prior to any flight. We will start off by checking the required documents in the aircraft by using the acronym AERO. We will begin with the airworthiness certificate, making sure it shows the correct tail number. Then we will check the registration certificate to confirm that it's not expired. For international flights, a radio license will be necessary to go in and out of the 80s. We'll continue with the operating handbook, checking the tail number and serial number of the airplane on its front page. And lastly, the most current weight and balance data of the airplane. On the cabin, we will do the following. We'll remove the control wheel lock. Ignition switch should be off. Avionics master switch off. Master switch on. We should make sure all of our circuit breakers are in and we should visually inspect our beacon light, the anti-collision light required by BFR equipment listed in 91205. Afterwards, we need to check the fuel quantity on the gauges and make sure the fuel annunciators extinguish when we test the panel. The fuel selector should be on both and the fuel shuttle valve should be full in. Then we need to extend the flaps and finally the master switch should be turned off. Once the cabin has been inspected, we should begin a pre-flight outside the airplane. We will start by making sure the baggage door is secured. The tail tie-down needs to be disconnected. We should check the control surfaces, freedom of movement and the security of the connections. Check the security of the trim tab. We should also check the security and the condition of the aircraft's antennas. On the right wing trailing edge, we should be checking the security of the flap and the rotation of the push rod in the middle of the surface. This will help the flaps retract and extend without any restrictions. We should now check the aileron freedom of movement and we need to make sure all the connections are secured. We should also make sure we check the condition of our strobe lights and our nav lights. And the next step will be to disconnect the right wing tie down. The five fuel sums need to be drained. At least take a cup full of fuel from each sum to check for water, sediments and the proper fuel grade before each flight and after each refueling. If water is observed, take further samples until clear and then gently rock the wings and lower tail to the ground to move any additional contaminants to the sampling point. If after repeated sampling, evidence of contamination still exists, the airplane should not be flown. The system needs to be purged by qualified maintenance personnel. We should now drain the valves located at the bottom of the fuselage. We will start with the fuel selector drain valve, followed by the fuel reservoir drain valve, 
and lastly the fuel strainer drain valve. We need to visually inspect the condition of the fuel before we return it to the tank. The desired fuel quantity should be observed on the tank and the fuel filler cap needs to be secure and its bend unobstructed. Additionally, the aircraft antennas on top of the fuselage should be visually inspected. The oil level needs to be checked and we need to make sure we are not operating on less than 5 quarts. We should then secure the oil dipstick and filler cap. The engine cooling inlets need to be clear of obstructions and the alternator belt needs to be tight and secure. We should then check the propeller and spinner and check for nicks, dents and security. The air filter needs to be clear of restrictions such as dust or other foreign matter. The nose wheel tire has to have proper inflation and we should check for visible signs of wear. The nose wheel strut needs to show at least 3 inches of clearance. The left static source should be checked for blockage. The pitot tube needs to be attached and secure and free of obstructions. We should then check for blockage on the fuel vent opening. The wing tie down needs to be disconnected. The stall warning opening needs to be checked for blockage. The landing and taxi light needs to be clean and in good condition as well as the strobe light and the nav light on the left wing. The aileron and flap on the left wing should also be checked for freedom of movement and security of its connections, just like we did on the right wing. We should now drain the fuel from the five sumps on the left wing, just like we did on the right wing. The fuel quantity needs to be visually inspected and the fuel filler cap should be secure with its bent unobstructed. And finally, we need to check the main left tire for any signs of wear that can lead to a flat tire upon landing, as well as the brake lines for any potential hydraulic leak. And that's it guys, our pre-flight is complete and our pilot knows that her airplane is ready for a safe flight. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and to check our other courses at myeasyflight.com. Thanks for watching.